when someone jumps in an ice tub or cold freezing water for one to three minutes? What is happening physiologically to the brain and the body when they do that? Yes, there's so much going on. It's, it's insane. It, everything, all the cells in the body, everything is activated because this is a moment where the body thinks or acts as if you are going to die because it's such a huge threat to the body. You could die within 20 minutes in cold water, 15 minutes, a half an hour, depending on the temperature and how, of course, you are in the water. If you accidentally fall in, then that's, of course, dangerous. But we are talking about deliberate cold exposure here. So if you do this on deliberate purpose and you know how to get in and off, and you should always do that, you always have an escape plan, then you should think about this as a healthy way of shocking the body. So you shock the body and that is activating all your cold receptors on the body when you submerge into the cold water. And that's going to send a signal to the brain. I talked to that uh, just before. And that's going to increase dopamine in the brain and all the cytokines, that's um, no adrenaline, which is activating the brown fat immediately because now you are activating your sympathetic nervous system, and that is your fight and flight response. So everything is activated wow. in the body. Um, the brain is, you would imagine that because you are jumping into cold water, you will have a higher blood flow to the brain. A lot of people say that, I've heard, but quite the opposite is actually happening. So when you go into cold water, you will have a decrease of blood flow to the brain. A restriction. Is that so, a good thing or is that a... But that's a risk, I would say. It's a risk that you don't get as much oxygen to the brain as you did when you're normally just walking around, meaning that you will have to be mindful around how you go in, how are you holding on to something, are you new to this, and never do it alone. Right. Because you could get lightheaded, you can even faint, some people do, and especially if you do some kind of breath hold before, you go in or hyperventilation, I would just not recommend that. Um, always try to do slow nasal breathing in the water. If you are new to this, you, right. you it's probably can. It's your first time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, try to slow down your um, sympathetic nervous system by activating your parasympathetic nervous system. But that is really hard in the beginning, but you can try. So, but one thing I would just say that people should avoid is uh, doing hyperventilating breath work before and in the water because that's definitely going to activate your sympathetic nervous system even more decreasing the blood flow to the brain and oxygen to the brain and increase you too and you will have less oxygen um, delivered to all your cells in the body and that's that's a risk right so what you want to do is slow nasal breathing or you can even do in through the nose and then out through the mouth. If, if you can do that and try to like keep calm and thinking about that there's, there's nothing wrong in just breathing through the mouth if you're panicking, that's, that's of course one thing you have to do, but then go out and make it a good experience and then you can go in again. Sure. But what you do is activating the sympathetic nervous system. If you can breathe through the cold shock response, then you are definitely good. Um, you can rehearse that and then you will activate more the parasympathetic nervous system. So what is going on here? Well, the first thing, you activate your fight and flight system, the sympathetic nervous system. All your stress hormones are going up, no adrenaline and dopamine. Uh, you have um, even oxytocin going up, actually, mm -hmm. um, which is also uh, making you grateful and, and you have this love hormone in your brain. But you should just be mindful that the only thing that you can use to ha get control of your sympathetic nervous system is your breath. Right. But if you can do that and you can get breathe through the cold shock response, you will get calmer afterwards. And if you put water to the face, also on your face, then you will also activate your vagus nerve, which will help you a bit. And So don't just go, you know, below the neck. Also put water in the face when you're doing it. Well, you could, yeah. It's hard, though. It's hard, though. It's cold. <laughs> well, one thing I think that people should maybe try to avoid is the head dunk, if yeah. anything. Really? But, yeah. Avoid it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Even if you're more advanced or you've been doing it for a while, you still think avoid it? 
Well, it's just because avoiding it will help you keep your heat up in the body. So it's to avoid hypothermia and hypothermia is a risk and it's a process. As soon as you go into the water, you are on the process of hypothermia. Wow. <laughs> you are. Yeah. So, um, and you don't want your core temperature to go down to 35, but we do see research showing that if you submerge to the neck, then you have all this, you have your fat, you have your tissue, bones, everything is protecting you from a very rapid heat, lo co heat loss of the core. Um, but that rate will still be high because the water is cold, right? But if you then dunk the head, then you will increase that heat loss rate up to 36% extra. Wow. So you don't want to lose heat that fast because it could be dangerous potentially. And also because you could faint when you don't get that oxygen to the brain. Yeah. So I'm just saying that the head dunk is not necessary. You will get all the benefits just by in going into the water up to the neck and it's more safe and um, of course you should do that with other people around you to keep it safe. Is there a certain temperature we should be at when we get in the ice or cold therapy? Uh, so cold uh, water is per definition 15 degrees Celsius and, and under. What is that Fahrenheit Tina? I'll look it up later but 15 70, degrees 70? 70, 6 or something? Okay. I don't, I don't know. Because I usually I usually go in around forty four degrees is Fahrenheit. It? What is it? Fifty nine degrees yeah, Fahrenheit. 59. Yeah, yeah. fifty nine. So under sixty. Yeah, under sixty. Fahrenheit. Yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, I usually go around forty four degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. That might probably under ten degrees. But Celsius. that's under ten degrees. Yeah. 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 And it's cold. And it's, yeah, cold. it's cold. Well, the thing is that if you if we look at how the me the metabolism is activated, because really that that shows that you have activated your sympathetic nervous system. And if you want to get the benefits, you would just have to look at when is your sympathetic nervous system activated. And you can do that with higher degrees than, than that. Right, right. So you don't have to go that cold all the time. Sure. Um, you could also go a little bit warmer, then a little bit colder, just to keep increasing that exercise for your cells where you increase that hormetic stress and you increase the the heat shock proteins in the cells which repairs the cells and the enzymes and make that cell stronger it if repairs it it repairs it and it if you don't overdo it so if you overdo it sit in a cold tub for 10 minutes or something like that i would i would su suspect that that would be too much for the body if you do that over a longer time we we do need research which shows that how is the higher threshold for this and both temperature wise but also timing wise sure right? So I've been doing cold therapy or ice baths for about 22 years. I started when I was 18. That's a lot. <laughs> right? I start, Now, it's been off and on for yeah. 22 years, but I started when I was 18, all through college. I did it probably three times a week. After football practice, I would do it almost daily. Um, and it was probably in the high 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. It was probably like 58, 59, somewhere around there. It was 55 every now and then. And it was usually a waist below. Yeah. It was a tub, like a you know, cold plunge tub that we had for sports. It was kind of waist below. And I always felt the physical effects afterwards where it was like I practiced and trained very hard. My legs were tired and they were sore. Yeah. I'd get in there for five minutes, waist below, and I'd feel like recharged. I'd feel Fantastic. like you know, my muscles were lighter, they were recovered. How long did a lot you sit? Better. Maybe five or six minutes. Five, you know? six minutes, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it was always waist below. So it wasn't as cold as if it was up by the neck. Yeah. Right? So you could tolerate it more and it was yeah. just the legs. And I always felt better and I felt better the next day after I would get some sleep after that and then recovered. I felt like, man, I can, can hop around. I can use my legs better. They were more efficient. So I got the benefits from that, you know, over those years of college. Now, over the last 10 years, I started to get more into it just from understanding, okay, how do I optimize my life? How do I burn more fat? By learning more about some of this. Um, but when you did the controlled studies, the two different studies, those that did ice therapy and those that did not for those six months, did you see more fat loss in those that did the ice therapy in this study? Did you see that they, that they got stronger muscles did they, you know, did their blood change? Did they 
they feel younger? What were the other benefits to the control group that jumped in the, the ice mm. throughout that time? That's a really good question. So, um, did it help them reverse their age, their biological, you know, clock or <laughs> did it do any of these other things? Yeah. Well, you, you can say that if you have a lower blood pressure, I think it's a really good blood pressure is sounds a bit boring, but it's actually a super interesting outcome and a very stable outcome. When you look at uh, how well your metabolism is, how well your cardiovascular uh, is cardiovascular system is functioning. So if you can lower your blood pressure by some intervention, then it's a, it's an intervention that you should appreciate at least because we did see that the winter swimmers had a lower blood pressure and heart rate basic level baseline level. So that means that they probably have lower inflammation and uh, also a better metabolism, which we also did see from measuring the brown fat. But we also saw that they had um, a better glucose metabolism. So meaning that they were, when they drank this sugar drink, it, it's, it's a glucose tolerance test. It's they called. processed it better, right? Exactly. It was more they efficient. Drink, it's more efficiently getting rid of the sugar from the bloodstream. It's not storing the fat, it's, it's getting it out. Yes, yeah. exactly. So we did that test and we did see that they had a faster glucose metabolism. They also had um, lower insulin levels. So the insulin levels have to be as low uh, as we can because that means that our cells are very um, um, sensitive to sugar. And that's good because then you don't have all that sugar floating around in your blood circulation. Sure. Um, what we else did we see? So they actually also built up, and this sounds a little bit con in, in, in intuitive, I, I would I would say maybe that they built they had we we took some biopsies from their white fat to see how does it look, and it seems like they have this higher lipolysis, but also uh, lipogenesis. Um, they sorry they had higher lipogenesis, so um, building up the white fat. So that could be because they increase their metabolism so much that the body is trying to keep the storage up. So the lipogenesis, meaning that the that um, the white fat cells try to restore the fat cells that they are losing all the time. Really? Yeah. And we did see the winter swimmers had a lower fat percentage. We, of course, because of the the, nat the how the the nature of this study, uh, we could not tell whether it was because they did one half an hour, one hour of more exercise per week, or if it was because they did, but it's not that much of a difference, I would say, but they also did the winter swimming and also the the, the sauna. The heat each. as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, and that's going to top off your, your, uh, your exercise and metabolism even further. So it makes sense that they probably have a bit of a lower fat percentage. And at the same time, we did see in the white fat that they had a higher... Um, lipogenesis. So what is lipogenesis? Lipogenesis is um, um, a way to measure so how fast or how much does the body wants to increase the fat in the white cells to say that the thing. So, so, it, so the, those bodies that were doing the cold and the heat, their white fat cells were reproducing faster is what it sounds like. It, yeah, because they were also burning, burning so fast. Burning it off, yeah. So they're like, okay, we need to yeah. stick around here yeah. to protect you if there's a, yes, you know, a, a fast. And so they were building fat cells yeah. just as fast as they were burning them. Um, maybe not. Okay, but, but it was it stronger. Was trying to. <laughs> right, right. But it was burning them so fast. Yeah. More than it was keeping. Yeah, you. because we we also need that depot to survive in times of fasting right. and uh, this body is just old you know it's an old dna where we were going hunting and we didn't always have that much food that we have today so the body is still the same we try to keep the storage and and, and we were hunters and gatherers once right so it 